here with the manager of the Mesa Solar Sox, James Cooper, but uh, Coach Coop, as people mm -hmm. like to call you. Or, or just Coop. Yeah, or just Coop. Welcome to the Arizona Fall League. Mm -hmm. uh, glad to have you here this year. What are you most excited about? Uh, just learning more about the players mm -hmm. uh, from these different organizations. Uh, with my experience as a player with the Astros and the Yankees, I only know two ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm anxious to see uh, like some of the objectives that the other clubs have for their players and see some things that I can use to just help guys become better baseball players. Of course, you're most familiar with your guys being in the Yankees organization, mm -hmm. but as you look up and down this Solar Sox roster, uh, what can we expect from your group this year? Man, I believe we're going to be able to affect the game in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have some really good solid defenders. So with that being said, I believe we'll be able to take away some hits. Mm -hmm. um, the pitching staff is, you know, pretty loaded, just like every other staff when you talk about the type of players that will be here. And offensively, I think we have guys that can hit for a high average, mm -hmm. hit the ball over the fence, and then also take some bases. No, of course, the Fall League is, you know, for development of players mm -hmm. and, and, and everything and making sure they advance. But it's also for the development of coaches and managers Absolutely. like yourself. Uh, being here with so many great minds from many different organizations, mm -hmm. what are you going to take away from them? And how excited are you to uh, really immerse yourself in this environment? Just as well as you learn from other orgs, like their way of doing things as far as teaching the game, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, pitching, hitting, defense, base running outfield play, something that I can, uh, you know, take home for myself to, you know, help develop my career as far as uh, just helping guys become better baseball players, whether I'm talking to a kid that's on his way to college, you know, a kid that's on his way to high school, mm -hmm. and then in this instance, you know, players that are, are in minor leagues on their way to the big leagues. Now, why baseball for you growing up? Mm -hmm. uh, you, there are so many options out there. Yep. Why baseball? Why was baseball the sport for you? Well. I was a pretty solid athlete in, in all three of the major sports, football, baseball, and basketball. Um, baseball was my grandfather's favorite sport. You know, I got attracted to the game because he was an Atlanta Braves fan, mm. and that's what we grew up watching. Um, but, you know, after playing, you know, all three of the major sports, and, you know, I, I feel that, you know, baseball is the sport that teaches you more about life uh, and more than any of the other sports. Mm. Um, there are some references from the other two that can, you know, be life uh, uh, lessons that you can learn but you know within the game of baseball um, when you're hitting like you are by yourself you know when you are fielding that ball or throwing that ball you're by yourself uh, mm -hmm. you know when you're running the bases you're by yourself like there is no no help side defense so there's no no double coverage there's no double team there's no boxing one you know when you're you know trying to uh, get things done on the baseball field that can help you defend a guy in basketball that can help you defend a guy in, in football. Uh, so, you know, with all the eyes being on you, when you get a chance to make that play to succeed or fail, um, everybody knows that you were the guy that struck out or you were the guy that got that hit. And I think lessons like that uh, teach you more about life and you get more of those lessons in baseball in comparison to basketball and football. Your Twitter bio, is something that mm -hmm. struck me was you have the hashtag future big league manager. Mm -hmm. First, how important is it to manifest goals, and how are you going to instill that you know, goal setting and, and mindset uh, into this group? Well, you know, talking to former big league managers and active big league managers uh, like Jerry uh, Emanuel, you know, I had a chance mm -hmm. to work with him up in Seattle during the All-Star Game this past year, uh, being on the staff with him during the Swingman Classic, and then, you know, just having a guy like Dusty Baker who, you know, I can call and kind of get some advice from. Um, just seeing what those guys are doing and seeing how they affected the game uh, in their communities where they're from, uh, just in the culture of baseball, uh, with it not being that many African Americans or you know black coaches to get a chance to be a, a big league manager, you know I feel that's a, a calling for me, mm -hmm. uh, and I feel I'm on the right track to doing that. And I think the impact that I can leave on this game and in this world uh, can be uh, ten times magnified after becoming a big league manager because, you know, that's what I aspire to do. When did that become a goal for you? Um, well, the, the primary goal was to uh, lead Grambling to Omaha to the College World Series. Yep. Uh, and to be like the first uh, HBCU to do it, that's something that was a goal of mine. Uh, and just being able, had I done that while I was there, 
that would have been a major impact for college baseball. That would have been a major impact for the African American community that is, mm -hmm. that is playing the game. And I think had we got there and being on that national stage, it would have opened up the eyes of that young athletic black kid that was in that bubble between do I go play football, do I go play basketball, do I go play baseball? And had they seen us on TV, that probably would have mm -hmm. inspired them. And I think I can get that same inspiration from being a big league manager to those guys. How important is that, what you just mentioned? Yeah. And of course, you spent so much time in Grambling as a mm -hmm. player and as a, the, the head coach for so long. But to, to see and invest in um, black communities mm -hmm. with baseball so they can see guys that, that look yep. like them yep. growing yep. up, having success so they can dream about baseball as their sport. Man, it's very important. Like when you look at the three major sports, uh, football, baseball, and basketball, mm. like baseball was the only sport that African-Americans had they, their own league in. So with them having their own league, and I'm referring to the Negro Leagues, yep. uh, they had their own teams. Uh, they had their own general managers. They had their own scouts. They had their own ballparks. You know, they had their own in every facet that you see a major league club that may have today. Um, and now, of course, that's not there, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, not that it may be on the horizon of coming back, but it could be a catalyst to, you know, influence more, more, more African-Americans and black players to continue to play baseball and not focus so much more on football and basketball. There have been some really good positive momentum towards that with mm -hmm. the development programs, the RBI program, yep. and what you mentioned earlier this mm -hmm. year, the, the HBCU Swing Man mm -hmm. Classic. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you have, deal, you and, you, with, and you yeah. have the pipeline, right? Diversity pipeline. So, so you've worked, you know, mm -hmm. handily in a lot of those different things. Mm -hmm. What are those experiences like, and, and how do we keep moving forward with those programs? Well, one, you you have to have the right people in place mm -hmm. that are participating in those programs to uh, to get in those grassroots areas to help find players, but also find coaches that want to be a part of the game. Um, you know, like you mentioned before, before we just started that, uh, you know, some of my former players that got drafted and are now, you know, coaching or, or scouting, like that could be a avenue for them to stay a part of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you look at uh, with the, the percentage of players is low, but you may just have, you know, employees uh, in other areas, whether they're in the video department, scouting department, analytical department, uh, and the list goes on and on, strength and conditioning. Um, maybe those those players could see themselves doing something with you know a major league team even if they're not actually on the field. Uh, it's specifically, uh, one of the things that you've really worked on among many, mm -hmm. uh, the MLB develops program, um, working with you know, all age levels uh, of development. What uh, is that experience like, and and you know how? Do you, what do you take from teaching other people and, and apply it to you? Well, it's just using those past experiences to find out if I can use that to help the next player that, uh, you know, that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you look at uh, those programs, I think the, the biggest thing for me is to see a kid when he's in like junior high and he's a part of that program. And then, you know, a few years later, uh, you know, he gets his first Division I offer mm -hmm. uh, and then he does another event. And then the next year later, you know, he's on a, a prospect future draft pick and then the year after that he's actually drafted so so to see like uh, a player come in uh, and see that matriculation as they you know develop to become a better baseball player and see the fruits of their labor put them in a place where uh, they can benefit and get drafted from it and you know and just have that dream of getting their name called and go sign that professional contract and play pro ball. You got to coach with Team USA mm -hmm. um, Number one, how cool is it to represent your co country? Man, it was extremely cool, especially since, you know, we had a chance to win the gold medal. And mm -hmm. uh, after we uh, won the gold medal over in Mexico, uh, it was it was a it was a game changer for me uh, just hearing the anthem play mm. nowadays. Um, you know, when you you look at some of the experiences and the plight that you know uh, a black man goes through with with, with racism or mm -hmm. discrimination and you look forward to uh, like George Floyd's incidents um, but when you come together for one cause uh, one team and people from many different backgrounds many different races mm -hmm. but the objective and the goal is to let's not leave here without this gold medal uh, you know, I believe, you know, teams can uh, 
diverse teams can help bring countries together, mm -hmm. can help bring political parties together, uh, could help bring, uh, you know, just different ethnicities together. So mm -hmm. when you look at it from that perspective, like, you know, uh, the national anthem just sounds different to me now. Mm -hmm. That, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to bring a similarity to this Arizona Fall League and Team USA, there's so much talent that is thrust in one area, and you don't have a lot of time to gel. Mm -hmm. How are you going to uh, manage you know multiple different organizations yeah. into that one common goal? Well, as far as the gelling part goes, uh, it's just uh, having tough conversations with mm -hmm. form directors and coordinators from those different organizations to see exactly what they want those players to accomplish while they're here. Uh, put all those things in together and you try to pull from what everyone said, which they might have said differently, but is there mm. something that they're all saying that's the same? Mm. So putting all those together and putting out the, the best players that we feel that's going to give us the best chance to win, and then also putting the players in position where they can be uh, healthy and successful. Last question for you. The mm -hmm. coolest thing that I probably saw, your shoes. You got Jackie Robinson on mm -hmm. one and Cool Papa Bell on the other. Yep. What went into that? And, and I mean, they look pretty sick. How'd you get them done? Well, um, my uh, college roommate, Andrew Murray, uh, he started an art company, Andrew's nice. Art. Uh, you know, and he's done a ton of work for uh, many NFL uh, players. Um, I think one of the biggest names he's done, he's done something for Joe Burrow. Uh, with us being in Louisiana and Joe being uh, quote unquote a Louisiana guy since he went to LSU. Um, it was kind of huge, man. And uh, I actually wore these for the first time in Seattle at the Swingman Classic, hadn't had worn them since, and decided to bring them out today. I think it's fitting. Um, and I'm paying homage to, you know, some people that helped pave the way for, for me being here today. Like, who knows where. Um, you know, black baseball players would be had it not been for Jackie Robinson and Branch Rickey to do some um, as brash as they done. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I got a feeling that you're going to continue to pave ways for other people mm -hmm. and, and continue to, to provide different opportunities with them. And you're yep. going to make a big impact on this group this year. Thank yep. you so much for joining us and good luck this season. No problem, man. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks. I do it. Good stuff.